That's um, so I'm Rob Sainsbury and I'm the Group Managing Director for the Department of Health and Community. Um, I want to spend some time talking to you about our ambition um, as a newly formed Department of Health and um, what our focus is going to be. I want to talk a little bit about our model of care and um, we're also going to talk about how we're going to structure ourselves or proposing to structure ourselves to deliver some of the changes that we need to within um, our department. So, in terms of our ambition, uh, we want to create a healthy island. We want to provide safe, sustainable, high quality care. We want that care to be accessible to our service users when they need it. So we need to make some real changes within the way that we currently provide services to meet uh, that ambition. We are the biggest department of the public sector within the island. We represent about a third of the overall workforce um, and we're probably the most diverse department. So we have a range of different professionals across our acute hospital system, the community, social care, mental health, and we have a lot of complex partnership arrangements with organizations within the community, uh, within the voluntary sector, with the commercial sector, with the NHS back in the UK, and with other government portfolios as well, whether that's housing, Department for Education, Department for Infrastructure, and the Department for Home and Justice uh, Affairs. So we've got a very wide-reaching portfolio. We recognise that a lot of the things we do will actually impact upon islanders. So we've got a really big role to play in the way that one government particularly is going to meet um, its objectives in changing and improving some of the services that we provide. So in, in context of what one government means for us um, as a department, uh, we want to build on the momentum of some of the changes that have already happened. It's about how we can start to drive our services so that they work in a much closer way and that those services are more seamless for people who use them, they're more recognisable for people and that they deliver standards that people recognise so they know what they're going to get when they access a service, whether it's the hospital, whether it's the community or whether it's one of our, our mental health or our social care um, services. We don't do all of this in isolation and it's really clear that some of the things that we are dependent upon is really close working with our wider community and in particular uh, that involves the parishes, it involves the voluntary um, and the charitable sector of this island. It's a major component of care delivery within our, our model currently and we really need to build on that and I think um, in the introduction there is a real recognition that we've not built upon that in the way that we could. For me, um, being on the island for a year now, probably the most notable difference between this island and my previous experience in the NHS and in local government in the UK is the, the very rich, vibrant nature of the parish system, of the community spirit, of the volunteer system and the multiple partners that we have. I think they're actually the fabric and, and the backbone of the island and I think there is much, much more that we could be doing in partnership in working together. I think the blend between statutory function and partnership function could really be built upon and it's a, a strong place to be, be starting from. So I see it as a positive. But I don't think we've done particularly well in ensuring that we have that engagement. And I think we've had a bit of a governance deficit in how we ensure that other partners are actually influencing the way we construct ourselves and the way we deliver some of our services, which is why I was particularly keen to talk to partners about our changes and about what we want to achieve um, through some of the changes. And that's why I'm really delighted to be able to be here this evening and to get some feedback from you in relation to um, those changes. So we've, we've got a lot um, to address. You're not going to, be able to read all of that, sorry. It's quite a small screen there, but I'll, I'll explain it. So we, we've had a lot of strategy on the island in relation to health and care. We've had the P82 vision, we've had the whole uh, debate about the future hospital, which has been going on for quite a considerable time. We've had the mental health strategy, we've had a primary care strategy, we've had lots of different initiatives around how we want to drive change um, across the island. And we've got a newly formed executive um, director team within our new department, and we've got our own views about how we can take some of those strategies forward and actually drive some of the changes that we need to make. 
We spent a lot of time over the summer looking at some of the deficits that we think we have. So we've looked at some of the strategies, we've looked at the things we have delivered, we've looked at where the gaps are, we've looked at some of our pressures, and we've looked at some of our aims and goals about what we want to achieve. And we thought, how do we need to configure ourselves slightly different? And we brought together a reference group to help us do that. And that was represented all the different functions that we provide. So all of the professionals across our organisation were part of a working group. Uh, we had GPs there, we had some business intelligence, we had social care, we had mental health, we had physical health, we had doctors, nurses, physio, other allied health professionals. We had representatives of our community interface as well, uh, who were also there to support us in some of those discussions. And we've really used that time to start to test our feelings and our thoughts about the model of care and about how we want to configure ourselves. And there were some key headlines that we've learnt in terms of our focus and some of the deficits that we have in our current approach. The, the boxes in the middle here, which I'll, I'll just read out to you, represent some of the bigger challenges that we have. So one of the things we recognise is that we've not been particularly good at really pushing the self-care and the prevention agenda. And that is one of the real um, priorities within the common uh, strategic policy set by the Council of Ministers and endorsed by them. How do we actually start to drive more independence focused models of care? How do we really start to help people to help themselves? And that is the basis of our, form, of our strategy as well. How do we actually care for people and help them to care for themselves? So at the moment we don't have our services focused in a way that delivers that kind of self-care and prevention opportunity. We have made some progress in the way that we work with partners like Primary Care and we've got some good links in terms of the way we work with providers like Family Nurse and Healthcare, the hospice and some elements of the charity sector but we recognise we've not pushed that in the way that we could and for Primary Care particularly we feel we probably need something different in the way that our services work together. They need to be more connected. For people, they need to be able to navigate where hospital ends and where GP begins. And we need services in the middle that are going to really help and support people when they're at time of need. And that leads us on to the intermediate and ambulatory care. We've got some excellent services um, that stop people going into hospital and that help people come out of hospital when they are there, but they're not at a scale that <coughs> really supports people uh, in, a, in a high volume set, set, um, way. So they're quite a small team, they do very specific work, we think we probably need to do more in that space. And in particular, we have too many people who are coming into hospital for diagnostics and for investigations and tests and outpatient appointments when they really could have those things done at home or in a GP setting or in a centre, they don't necessarily need to come into the hospital environment particularly. So we were thinking about how we can build on our intermediate and ambulatory care offer. Within the hospital, uh, what we call our secondary scheduled and unscheduled care, um, we find those services are quite disjointed. So outpatients doesn't always talk to theatres, theatres doesn't always talk to the wards, the a &E department doesn't always talk to the emergency assessment unit and the GP sometimes has to navigate the whole thing with real difficulty at times. So we need the hospital to start having better connectivity and much better communication and we need the hospital to be less dominant in the way that it's driving our system of care and leading. We need that to be happening outside of the hospital is our firm belief. <coughs> and we've got quite a complex relationship with our tertiary care, the services that are provided off-island. If we think about physical health, we have about six NHS trusts that we, um, we work with and we contract with and we send patients to for various um, complex conditions. And we have some mental health providers in the UK that we also use. And we really need to think about our future with those uh, organisations. Do we need all of those services to be provided off island or could we do something differently? Is there opportunity with areas like Guernsey and is, are things like assistive technology able to change the way that we're currently requesting and needing people to really travel rather than access the care more locally? What was really consistent is the disconnect between these different components of service 
Um, and when we looked at some of our analysis, we looked at the strategy, we looked at what our data was telling us, it's saying to us that we are seeing patients and, and service users bouncing around our system of health and care, our, our direct provided system of health and care. They're seeing multiple professionals, multiple times, and they are literally being passed around and around and around. And when we looked at um, what we've called our patient level costing, we're seeing a real pattern. So our highest intensity of people who use the system, who cost the most, are our most vulnerable. They're usually older persons, they're usually frail, and they usually have multiple comorbidities, so lots of health problems, and they often have mental health problems as well. And they are literally going around and around and around and being assessed and assessed and assessed. And in a system like Jersey, we really want to stop that. You want to make sure that care is connected, there's continuity, and that people really understand who's doing what for them. So that was a real key focus of what we needed to address going forward in our model of care. We recognise that social care hasn't had the right level of focus and priority on the island. It's been very health dominated and we need to ensure we're thinking about a more holistic community social care um, focused model of care. The thing that by far though came across more than anything else was that we've certainly not addressed our physical and mental health care gap within the island. Uh, we have a real deficit in the way that we address some of our mental health care. We don't give uh, parity in the way that we support physical health and mental health. And I think if you look at the whole future hospital debate and discussion around that, you can see that the physical hospital building has really been quite dominant within the dialogue around health and care on the island. And actually, we think we've got a real problem here. And that whilst we're one part of the, the solution to support med better mental health, we're not the only part, and you really need that to be a broader island-based approach. So we felt we needed a, a different approach in the way that we start to drive the improvements within mental health. The other things that were really thrown up is that we've got an access problem. We do quite well with some services, but for some, they are not accessible at the time when you need them, uh, and we have a workforce deficit within some of these areas that are meaning we're not always able to provide services when people need them the most. We're often falling short, and that's resulting sometime in long waits, and it's resulting in long times for assessment of needs, and we need to really start to address that in the way that we're making changes um, to our care system. So we took all of this learning, um, we used that reference group as our barometer of, we've got some thoughts, we want to reorganise ourselves, we want to change the way that our services work so that we've got the ground laid to how we then work with other organisations and other partners. But we need to get our house in order. We had some very compelling um, conclusions from the Auditor General around the way our governance system worked. And, and we were clearly being told that there's a disconnect between the board and what's happening at the ground. And we need to make sure that that disconnect is addressed. And people in the ground need to start to drive the business in a much more regular um, fashion. So we propose some real changes. We've been out to consultation um, with these proposed changes. So in delivering different parts of that care model around those priorities I've just mentioned, <coughs> We think we need a different organisation in terms of our care groups and the way that we're going to start to organise ourselves to lead uh, some of those changes going forward. We've had 30 days of consultation that happened uh, just before Christmas. We've had overwhelming feedback. We've spoken to nearly 500 of our staff. We've had over 457 key lines of inquiry. Nearly 3,000 people have accessed our website to look at the uh, consultation proposal, and we've had some really, really good uh, information that's really made us think about some of the changes that we've made, and it's made us think about the need to potentially change some of our thoughts around the consultation as well. It's been very, very helpful. So in terms of how we want to organise ourselves, um, we start from the left, and we want to establish, this would be a new approach for us, a care group that focuses on prime, uh, prevention, primary and intermediate care. So at the moment, we don't have that function. We've got a commissioning element, we've got a partnership element. 
we actually want there to be a partnership group that really starts to take forward the prevention agenda. And I think that very much fits into uh, what, what this forum is also looking to achieve. I think this could be a vehicle for how we think about how we're going to do that. We want to establish a women, children's and family care, care group. Um, and this is an island, these are all island-wide uh, care groups. And whilst this is quite a small care group, we only have about a thousand births a year on the island, um, we have some real high risk within this area. We've got quite a small maternity service and we've got a small children's health service. We know that child adolescent mental health, as an example, is quite a pressured area um, globally. So for us, this was a real priority in terms of how we established this as a care group with its own <coughs> leadership and its own focus. Our secondary scheduled care would bring together all of our planned care functions, so our theatres, our outpatients, um, and our long-term care approach to how we start to get better preventative and proactive management of our patients going forward. Very much hospital focus, but not just hospital focus. It's about how we bring what ordinarily would be known as your planned care and some of your surgical functions together. We've got secondary unscheduled care, so that would be our urgent care services, our A&E, our emergency assessment unit, uh, and it would also be our medical wards as well that would be coming together under their own care group. At the moment, they're very separate, um, and again, we're seeing a bit of disconnect in the way that they work. We've got tertiary care on there because it's such a prominent part of what we do. It isn't a standalone care group, but it is a function of what we do, and it, it's, it's a big, big part of our budgetary uh, requirements, so we needed to include that there. We've wrapped mental health and social care around. We've had a great deal of feedback um, about this. Both of these needs to have real priority in terms of going forward, and they all, they go across all of the care groups. And um, so mental health will cover all of those elements, as will social care, and they need to have parity in the way that they are established. Quality and safety, is going to be a, a, a directorate function for us as well. Um, we've not invested in the way that we should around things like patient experience, using patients as part of our barometer and feedback around service changes, um, and that's a key focus for our quality and safety uh, group. They're really going to focus on driving the standards of care and making sure that what we're providing is of a high quality and making sure that people understand what we are actually giving them in care. We then bring together our clinical <coughs> support services, so our diagnostic services, um, our pharmacy and, and some of our therapist <coughs> services, and we put cancer into that as well. We don't actually have a cancer strategy on the island, and it's one of our biggest areas of demographic pressure. So they're very, that's a very connected service to diagnostics, so it makes a lot of sense to bring that care group together so that they can work more seamlessly. And then we also want to bring together our estates um, and our support services, our catering, our portering, they're quite separate in nature. They have the hospital service, you have the community service. We want to bring these people together so that they're all uh, driving the same function. And that includes some of our contract and our commissioning service as well. So this is quite a big change for us. It's a lot of staff. Um, and this is probably the most significant change that we've made. The reason why we want to do this is we feel that we've got to make these changes to really drive the closer working ambition that we have. Our, our real objective is to drive what we're calling integration of our services. And this has been something that the UK has really struggled in delivering. It's been hard to achieve a system whereby people work closer together, even in the services when you're directly in control of them. Uh, it's hard to work across those professional boundaries and disciplines. And that's what we want to really drive in the way that we are pushing um, our changes forward. Our ambition is absolutely to shift towards care that is far closer to home. And that is much, much more focused on an independence-focused model, which happens in the community. And our hospital is there for when people really need it and have to access it. We see far too many um, longer-stay patients coming into our hospital-based system, they often end up becoming debilitated. Uh, we know that long-length stay in hospital leads to harm, 
Uh, and we need to prevent that. And we've got a great opportunity to do that in Jersey. We're actually making really good progress with that. We're seeing some reduction and we're in our length of stay and we're seeing our occupancy get a little bit better. And we think that's directly as a result of the way that the system is starting to work together a little bit better. We've had some great support from our community provider and we think we've got more to do in how we actually go forward for that. But that has to focus on our vulnerable persons. It has to look at the people who really need our services most. And we need to think in a much more planned fashion about how we're going to actually get that care closer to them and start to use all of our system partners in, in delivering that objective. So I think we're really hoping that we can start a new relationship with all of our partners. In our governance structure going forward, we want it to be wider reaching. We want there to be more uh, charity and more voluntary sector voice and more patient voice as well. Uh, we want patients to start to scrutinise what we're doing. And we think forums like this are, are a perfect opportunity for us to engage with you and to get your feedback about what we're doing and to get your thoughts about our changes and that's that's why we're here today so happy to take any questions a lot of information if you uh, want more information if you access our one hcs paper uh, there's a short summary four page document and a 20 page document which will go through some of these changes in a bit more detail but happy to take any questions and helen or um, john uh, will do that i think sean